Now, I genuinely don't know if this is legal, but it's part of the Proxmox helper script, so I thought I'd go over it anyway. I'm a big fan of TrueNAS. You've seen most of my recent videos where I talk about TrueNAS, how simple it is to set up, but you can also go a little bit more in depth if you want to kind of dive a little bit deeper. But as I said, it's pretty straightforward to set up from the scratch. There is actually another player in town which isn't really spoken about because of the kind of the gray area that this sits in. Now, I came across this uh, a few years ago and I've been playing around with it on and off, but for the last kind of couple of months, I've actually been running it nonstop on my home network. And I'm talking about a company that has been recently been in the news and they've kind of backtracked on what they said by allowing specific hard drives again, because before they apparently locked down the hard drives. I am obviously talking about Synology NAS. And for me, this is a super beginner friendly user interface, Synology NAS. And it's kind of one of those things that anybody gets into home labs and kind of wants to start backing up their data, they start with Synology. So this is kind of what I want to go over and I want to show you how to install it because again, it is idiot proof because I've managed to do it. So anyway, I've waffled on enough. Let's jump over to the computer and let me show you my instance and then let's get it set up. So if we take a look, this is what my Synology NAS looks like here. I'm just running it locally on 10.0.40.81 and it's port 5000. And in a control center, you have pretty much most of the features that you need. You can do a lot of stuff. You can run the terminal, you can do security, you can do things like external access. Now, not everything is going to work the way it would work on a Synology NAS just because you obviously haven't got any of the services or availability of any of the services, but being able to what's called call home. So they, they're obviously going to connect with the server. It's going to un, not recognize the serial number that's running on this Synology NAS. But for the mass, vast majority of things, you can do anything that you need to do. Now, what I really like is that there are no restrictions to the package center. So here are all the apps that you can install on your Synology NAS. You've also got beta packages packages as well as a community packages. So you can run things like AdGuard Home if you wanted to. There's honestly so, so much stuff and this rivals TrueNAS in terms of app catalog and what you have available. As you can see here, I've got three apps that need updating and they are able to be updated without any problems whatsoever. You literally just click update all it goes ahead and does everything for you. Now, if I show you my specifics here on my Synology NAS, if we take a look at hardware here, well, I'm running this on four cores just because I can and I've given it eight gig of RAM again, just because I've got the available Anyway, enough waffling. Let's jump over to my other Proxmox server here, kind of a testing server, and let me show you how easy it is to set up. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, you will know that I'm a big fan of Prox Menu X here. Prox Menu X is a simple script that installs and it just allows you to create VMs super, super easy. So let me show you that. I have now logged into my Proxmox server, my other one, and all I need to do is type in menu, which brings me into this beautiful menu here. And if I scroll down to point number three, it says create VM from template or script, and I hit enter here. And here is where I can create all my different VMs. So I can create v Windows VMs, Linux VMs, Mac OS as well. I haven't played around with that. But here right at the top, it says NAS. And here, right the very first one, it says Synology DSM. And I can go ahead and just create a Synology NAS straight from here. You can obviously see all the other ones I can create as well. So I'm going to select Synology NAS. And this will obviously just walk me through all the steps. Now, now I don't tend to use the default settings. I tend to click on Advanced. Now, I give it a, a virtual machine ID. And I don't know why. I'm just going to give it 555. I put click OK. Absolutely no reason for that. Now here, I'm just going to go with Q35. By the host name, I just call it Synology NAS Demo, something like that. Under CPU model, I tend to go with host. Under CPU cores, I'm going to give it 8 because I've got a load of CPU cores spare. And under RAM, I have 32 gigs, so I'm going to give it 16384. And then under VM bridge, I just leave the default one. MAC address, leave the default one. All of this can stay as is. Now here is where you can be specific with what it is you want to do. You can either pass through a, a virtual disk, so you create create a virtual disk, which means you just give it a chunk of your disk space that you've got available and you pass that through. Or if you have a dedicated uh, hard drive, so that's it, such as an NVMe or a three and a half inch drive, you can pass that through directly to the VM. Now, in my case, because I've already got everything configured, I'm just going to do a, a virtual drive and I'm going to pass through a virtual drive. Don't ask me which one I want to use. I'm going to use my first one, Chonky. And then here is where you give it the space. Now, the difference between TrueNAS and Synology when it comes to the drive allocation is that on TrueNAS, you can install it on two separate drives if you want it to. So in RAID 1, for example, and then you have to give it extra drives to be used as storage, whereas Synology kind of just bundles everything together. So if you gave it just 32 gig, that's all your Synology is going to be. So in my case, I'm going to give it 500 gig just because. And it's going to ask me, so do I want to add another virtual disk? I'm going to say no. Now, here is where you can select your bootloader. So there are many different ways of doing things. Now, I'm running the arc loader. And if I go back to my VM here and I click on the console, 
we can see that I'm running the arc load. I've just had the most experience with it because I've run this on bare metal as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this. It's going to go ahead and download it and do everything that it needs to do for me. There we go. Here it's asking me for my, where do I want to use the EFI disk? I'm just going to give it on the choke chunky because why not? And then again, it's asking me for the loader disk. Again, I'm going to select chunky. I'm going to just keep everything on the one drive because this is just for demo purposes here. And there we go. It's now essentially configured everything. So I'm going to hit enter. And that is basically my VM up and running. So I can leave menu X, prox menu X here, get out of it here. And here is the VM essentially created. It's just not started up. So we're going to click on start the piece of software here. We are now in the arc config mode. Now here is where we need to kind of select which Synology NAS we want to emulate. So it's just loaded up. Now here at the top is where you can select the model that you want to use. Because again, this is a virtual. This doesn't know what you want it to be and what model it is. So you have to kind of tell it which one it should mimic. Now here's where you want to select what model you want to run. Now I'm going to work my way through here and look at the features. But to be honest with you, I tend to go with uh, DS923. I don't know why. I've just always gone with DS923. It's an Intel based one. It has all the features it needs. It just doesn't have an iGPU because I don't need an iGPU. But it's got an M.2 cache and it can select M.2 volumes. So I'm going to hit OK here. Here's where you select the DSM version. Now one of the things to keep in mind with the DSM versions is that you cannot just update it whenever the latest version comes out. So I'm going to select 722 and I'm just going to go through and let it do its thing automatically. And there we go. If we are on this screen here, that means we have successfully installed it. We then need to press Arc DSM mode. I'm just going to hit enter and it will now load into our Synology NAS. And this is what the screen is going to look like. And what's going to happen is the cursor is going to stop blinking and you kind of think, hold on, it's crashed. No, this is completely normal. Don't worry about that if you get this. But yeah, it's going to start blinking and then it's going to stop. And eventually, yeah, you're going to be panicking a little bit because don't ask me how I know. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to go either to HTTP 10.0.421275000 or whatever your IP address is, or you can go to find.synology.com. Now, I'm going to show you that's this with find.synology.com. I'm going to hit enter here and it will take a second. But essentially what it's going to do is it's going to scan your network and look for a synology technology NAS that is in setup mode. Now, just a quick reminder with the IP address, what I would suggest is you go ahead and reserve this IP address on your router and make sure that it is set to something permanent because when this reboots, it's possible that it doesn't pick up the 10.0.40.127 address and it'll just jump onto something random. So it's just something to keep in mind that you should reserve this IP address on your router because it's just much easier to manage and then at least it's assigned constantly the same IP address. So it's found my NAS here. I'm going to click connect. I'm just going to obviously read the all of this stuff here and then I'm going to tick the box and go next. And there we go. Now it's asking me to install it. I'm just going to click next on all of this. It's telling me that all my data will be deleted, which is fine. And then here is where I have to match the product name that I'm installing this on because it just needs to confirm that you are actually deleting it. And obviously, depending on the speed of the hardware, this is what it's going to look like. And it'll just go ahead and install Synology NAS for you. So you can, if you want it to, just ping the IP address. And here you can see whether it is actually giving you a response. So you can see here now request timeout, which means it's just in the process of restarting. And that way you know that when you get a ping response again, you can go back and kind of start loading and logging into it. Because there we go. We've just had the IP address pinging back. So I can now go back to here. And if I was to refresh the page, this should technically bring me to the web front end to go ahead and configure an account. And there we go. There's our Synology NAS that's loaded. My God, this was slow, but here we are. And I'm going to call it demo NAS like so. Obviously set up a admin account and obviously make sure you set a super secure password. And I want to show you how to set up the basics. So we're going to go click next here. Now here it's asking you about select option to for your Synology NAS. Now I'm going to say notify me because we cannot just go ahead, as I mentioned earlier, and just update it willy nilly. We need to make sure that this is in line with kind of the patched versions and so on. Now here we can create a Synology account. I'm going to skip that. I'm also not going to submit any data to Synology. Now here it's going to ask me, do you want to set all of this up? I can do this later. I don't need to do any of this. I'm going to dismiss this and I'm going to do no thanks for now for multi-factor, but I highly recommend you use multi-factor. This is just for demo purposes. Now the first thing you're going to see is this create storage pool and volume. Now this is where you have to select and configure your drives how you want them to be. Now because mine are virtual drives, I don't need to worry too much because I've got a backup of my Proxmox server and I've just given it a chunk of my hard drive. Now here under RAID, I'm just going to keep it as SHR. That's absolutely fine. Don't need to name it anything. And here I'm going to select that 500 gig hard drive that I've given it. Skip drive check because I don't need to wait. And I'm going to give it a max allocated size. Essentially, I just wanted to use all of it. 
and that's absolutely fine. ButterFS is absolutely fine as well, and I don't, do not want to encrypt this volume, and here we go. We can go ahead and set apply. What we can then do is once we've got this hard drive configured, we can then create smaller partitions for various things. So you can create home folders for users, or you can have one just for photos or just for backups. That's the way I've got it configured. We're now going to go back to Control Panel, and here is where we can set up shared folders. And this is where you can create those separate partitions. So I'm going to click on Create. I'm going to create a shared folder. I'm going to call this just for demo purposes, backup. And I'm going to call it backup, backups like so, if I can spell. And then location, volume, the ButterFS one is absolutely fine. I do not need a recycling bin. And here, that's absolutely fine. Everything else is fine. I do not want to do any of this. And I'm going to click next. And I'm going to click next again. And here is where you give it permissions. Now, you can go ahead and set up multiple users. So if you want to have one just called backup and you have a super secure password and only backup user can access this backup drive, then by all means, you can do that. You can be really, really granular with your kind of access rights and so on, your access control list. Because if you just want to have a backup user that you log in on multiple computers and they're the only ones that have access to this drive so nobody else can get in it, delete backups and so on, this is how you can configure it. For me, my Bobby user is absolutely fine. I'm going to click OK. So I've got one created and here I'm going to create another one and I'm going to call it main NAS, something like that. Again, don't need a recycle bin. Click next, 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 and so on. And again, here is where I can give it read, write. So I'm going to give it this, but I'm also going to give it access to guest users because sometimes somebody might be at your home and they want to just drop something on. And if this is just a NAS that you're not really interested in, you can also access, give guests access to this. And if we take a look, we've got two drives now configured. They're both running on the same hard disk, but they just have separate partitions. And this is where you can also, as I said, set up different uh, access control lists. Now, one thing I'm going to enable is, and I'm going to show you this why, because I'm running this virtually, I'm going to enable SSH here and I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to click OK. So we're now going to go into the package center. And again, we're going to get all these things thrown at us. And then obviously here we've got a couple of updates because what software is installed these days without any updates. And here's what I was saying, where you can go ahead and install all the different packages that you want. Now, one of the packages that I recommend you install is called Cumo Guest Agent here. And this is for Proxmox to be able to communicate with it better so you can see the memory usage, the CPU usage, and all this sort of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. And also, this is why I've enabled SSH, because there's a command that we're going to have to run to enable this. And this command I found on here, which is poor man's Synology NAS on Proxmox. And if you go all the way to the bottom, here is essentially this thing that we need. And it's this command, sudo sed-i, and it just essentially runs this queue in guest. So I'm back on my terminal here, and I'm going to type in SSH, and then obviously the user account that I've created. And then I need to do 10.0.40.127, because that's the IP address. Going to hit enter. We're going to get presented with this. It's going to ask me for my password. And we are now in. And here is where I'm going to paste this in, and it's going to run it. And you're not going to see any output. You're not going to see anything. But here is where you can see I have essentially run this. So if I go back to my Synology NAS, this should now be a running. If I click start, there we go. Give it a second and it will just start up. And if we take a look here, we should see everything here. We've got the internal IP address here of 10.0.40.127. And here it's just going to have much better communication with Proxmox, where we'll be able to see, as I said, CPU usage, memory usage, and how much space is being used and everything like that. And now it's up to you what it is you want to do. You can even install AI consoles. So if you want to run, for example, some AI stuff on here, you can by all means do that. One of the packages I really like is called CloudSync because this is the one that allows you to sync to, as you can see, multiple shared drives, OneDrives, and all this sort of stuff. So I could, for example, click OneDrive for business, click Next, and this is now connected to my OneDrive. And I use OneDrive at the minute because I really like it. But here we go. We can select now what it is that we want to back up. And I use my backups to back up my backup. And here's where you can select the folder you want it to back up. And I'm going to select the backups one because that's where all my backups are going to go onto my local network. And then they're all going to get uploaded to my OneDrive. So I'm going to select here. And then on the remote path, I can select where I want it to go and I can create a folder and I can go NAS backups, for example, or something like that. If I can spell, there we go. Click OK. And I want it to go into this folder and that's how I want it to be backed up. Now on the sync direction, and this is something that you've got to keep in mind is you can select this to be bi-directional. And what that means is that if you make a change in the cloud, it will propagate down onto your NAS and vice versa. If you make a change on the NAS, it will propagate back up to your kind of backup solution. And you need to pick what's right for you. For example, I can choose upload local changes only. So whatever change I make on the NAS, that gets uploaded up into the cloud because I only need to store the backups on the cloud. I don't want to make any changes up in the cloud. So if I need to delete it from the cloud, by all means, I can just delete it. And I don't necessarily need those changes to affect anything that's on the local drive here. I'm going to select next. 
and I'm going to click done. And that's basically it. I can now go ahead and set a schedule. So if I want it to not run this at any point other than say I want it to run at between 2 and 1 and 3 a.m. for example something like that you can click the run and then you just select the section here and that means it's now only going to run every day between 1 and 3 a.m. and there we go we've now got Synology NAS configured basically start to finish but I think if you're interested in Synology NAS you should also take a look at TrueNAS and you should check out this video down here because that is going to do a complete walkthrough through start to finish on TrueNAS.